This is the Scary Movie Clubcast. Live from the Clubhouse, it's the Scary Movie Clubcast. And this is Amanda. This is Dahmer. This is Mackenzie. And this is Nadine. And though, as you heard, we do have Dahmer with us, and Megan wasn't able to join us tonight, but tonight we watched the sequel to The Shining, Dr. Sleep. We're going to pass it over to Dahmer here, who's going to give us a brief summary of the movie. So the movie takes place some time after The Shining, partially in Danny's childhood, but for the majority of the movie, as he is an adult, it deals with dealing with trauma and also expanding the Shining world to include other people who have similar powers and simultaneously people who feed on those powers. Mm-hmm. Okay, we're going to go over to Mackenzie now with our fun facts. Okay, all the fun facts I have really about Dr. Sleep are related to The Shining because Mm -hmm. that's sort of a foundation for it, obviously. So three scenes that they use in the movie are originally from The Shining. That's the only parts of the movie that they actually originally, like, they took the film from The Shining. Um, It's the part where I think even Dahmer made a comment about it where they're kind of panning over the water and then it kind of zooms up Mm. and the car is driving up to the Overlook Hotel. Um, so they just took that scene from the movie and, like, darkened it and added snow to it. Oh. And I thought it was really funny when we were watching and you made a comment about it. And I was like, I have a fun fact about that. <laughs> um, <laughs> little did she know. That's little the most fun part about having know. the fun fact. That's like, crazy, though, because I, 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 I was thinking how similar they managed to get that. Yeah, like, you said, you were like, there? wow, the homage is amazing. And it's like, it's, well, she said homage. <laughs> I was trying to save her grace there. Now it's hilarious. So the quote from the director is, The shot of the water in the island, the two shots after it of the car going up, going on the mountain. We cleaned them up, degrained them, made them nighttime, and added snow. But those are the only shots from Kubrick's film. This one's so fun. The crew built a life-size big wheel that the cast and crew makers rode around on set. <laughs> so they made a giant yeah. version of Danny's big wheel, and they all just, like, rode it but around. why? That seems like such a waste of resources. I don't know. It, I'm just to do it. I know. Well, I when I read that fun fact, I was like, okay, there, there must, must be a scene where they ride around in a big wheel. There's they, not. They must have cut it or something. There must be a reason. Yeah. Because that was, like, surplus cash. <laughs> One well, time. So much I know, time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think it's pretty cute. Interesting. Maybe it was exactly maybe it was just a arises more questions than it answers. I it's know. exactly something I would do if I had I a love it. <laughs> maybe they just bought you one would and not painted be put in it. charge of the budget. Yeah. I know. <laughs> and the studio you just found out that. you're not making any more movies. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you can tell in some movies when they just have like throwaway money in their budget and it's like you're doing too much. Mm-hmm. No one needs to see this. <laughs> like take it down. The hotel sets that they made are almost entirely practical. It's just that the ceilings are not, there's not real ceilings. Mm, they had the CGI yeah. in ceilings for the lighting. But everything else in that hotel is like a practical use. The sets they built are completely mm-hmm. practical use. This is one of my favorites. So the carpet, the iconic carpet, the hexagon carpet that even oh, Amanda said I she wanted love, so bad. I would love a rug of that just to have mm-hmm. in my house. Like, it would be a dream Me too. Dream. So they recreated that carpet. So that obviously... Mm-hmm. They have a scene where they have it in the movie, and two part fun fact is the first one they had they the originally what they did they did it and it didn't look right and so they went back and layered coloring over the film, mm-hmm. like they had a colorist like sit there and like compare it and compare it and compare it until it looked the way it did, and then once they were done filming the chairman of Warner Bros had the carpet installed in a conference room in Warner oh, Bros studios oh i love that so one of the cool. executive suites at Warner Bros studios has that carpet from the shining from doctor sleep i'm jelly i know i thought that was so cute i was like i i love that dream office i know it's just so <laughs> cute i mean imagine working there and you go in and it's like the shining carpet um, Kubrick's estate gave the filmmakers the blueprints of the original sets so that they would accurately recreate them. Ooh, and so, nice. Yeah, and so um, the filmmaker, Mike Flanagan, I think was his name, was... I love Mike Flanagan. Yeah, and he, he said it was a really cool experience to, like, look at the original blueprints of the Shining, like, set and recreate them, but then also, like where Kubrick deviated from his plans and thinking about, like, because his intentional deviance from his mm-hmm. original plans. And he said it was just a really cool experience. Okay. Filmmakers walked around with an iPad 
with the Shining playing to compare everything to the Shining. So oh, they had so it. Thorough. Yeah, so that every like shot, like it's every background, standard a walkthrough. <laughs> I mean, Nadine's not impressed with also, Well, no, I'm just saying, you're like, so thorough. It's well, pretty standard well, to be like, let's do a walkthrough and make sure it's right. Like, well, that's because like super <laughs> fans will be, that's wrong. That, and they'll it's wait, don't bag on that. I think it's, we just think that thorough sounds amazing because we're not thorough. We, like, start and then we're like, who's doing the summary? Who's doing this? <laughs> we're like, wait, you checked before you did? I actually think it's really cool because thinking about the time difference between The Shining being made versus this movie, it's not like it was five years ago. And so it's not as if they were just like, well, we got some leftover pieces. Like, let's just pop them back up there. Like, we got, we'll just reel the sets back out and repaint them. Like, it was, they probably don't have much of anything left from the making of The Shining. And so for them to sit there and feel the dedication for what, the last 30 minutes of the movie? Like, it wasn't even really in it. Like, much of The Shining, like, in little bits. But then that last part, for them to take that amount of time just so that fans watching Dr. Sleep would have that, like, assurance to it and be like, dang, they really did, like, they didn't just say, it's like, you know, guys, it's The Shining, like, don't you, like, isn't that kind of fun? They, like, actually thought, like, we're yeah. going to make it The Shining, like, it is going to be like this. Yeah, I've seen sequels made just, like, a couple years later that have that have more continuity errors than this did. Right. They also, um, I didn't write this one down, but the blood scene mm -hmm. with the elevator... They recreated that digitally because, oh, okay. yeah, because Stanley Kubrick, originally when he did it, it was miniaturized. I knew it. Every single take was completely different. So there's like not really any way that the filmmakers could recreate the blood scene from a different angle the exact way that Kubrick did. So they just had to digitally do it, which I think mm -hmm. is cool because, golly, to be those animation artists to sit there with like the scene of The Shining and be like, hey, gotta like... I'm moving every little you piece know? and you're like... They're like, gotta get the blood. Nope. You have to be Kubrick with his miniature. Every single reset would be I such know, a nightmare. I know, to clean it up? Or to, like, have to remit. Golly. Probably smart is you have multiple. So yeah. it doesn't work. That's... You move on to one while someone else starts cleaning one of them behind well, you. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't, he was yeah. known for that. He was oh, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. I'm not sure if that's exactly how many he did, but I know it's. it was, like, you know, Kubrick is, like, classically known for reshooting something a, a bunch of times. I won't put a number to it, but multiple times. And so there's no way that the filmmakers for Dr. Sleep would have been able to recreate that blood scene the way that he did it because it did it can't really be recreated. Right. He couldn't even recreate it like when he did it multiple times. My last fun fact, there's like a lot, but these are, I don't know. Um, is Danny Lloyd, who played Danny in The Shining when he was six years old. It makes a cameo in the movie. He is, you know, the scene at the baseball game when they're watching Little Baseball Boy? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then there's, like, two guys in the bleachers talking. Yeah. He's the one that doesn't talk very much. Aww, so the guy talking, you. being like, isn't that kid great? He's the one that, like, doesn't say it as much. I also watched part of an interview or something where I thought it was interesting that the woman who plays Rose the Hat. I thought she, she said she played the character as though she wasn't a villain. She did because like as the character you you don't see yourself as a villain. Like right. she was like, This is my family, I'll do anything for my family. So all the horrible things she did was like in her mind justified. I just thought that was interesting. Because the villain never sees himself. They see themselves as a hero. Right, so she didn't want to be playing a act as if she's playing a villain. She yeah. wanted to act as if She's yeah. playing like a hero almost. Right. And if you're a fan of Hill House, you'll notice that a lot of the actors from Hill House also are in this movie too. Because Mike Flanagan likes to use the same people over and over again. Because he likes what he likes. Yeah. That's how lots of directors feel. Mm hmm. Yeah. It's fair. <laughs> you know what I just noticed is I'm sure it's not an. It does. It's not written down as a fun fact, but the the house number of. I guess her name's Abra, the little girl. Her mm -hmm. house number is 1980, which is when The Shining came out. Oh. <gasps> oh. Yeah, I because I noticed her house number was 1980, and I'm like, I wonder. It is. So those are the fun facts that I compiled for Dr. Sleep. My fun again is so talented. I love it when he has his characters do those, like, the monologues in it. I love it in Hill House. I love to hear. Love it. Speaking of things I love, what was everyone's favorite part? Domer, you want to go first? I have a lot of things that I love about it. One of my favorite things is just the homages 
to the original movie, especially when you start getting towards the end. It, I don't know, whenever I watch it, I, I, get, I, that, I get that feeling. The nostalgia vibes. You're like, yes! Like, you get that kind of feeling, and especially noticing how accurate and how well they kept the sets and doing all this stuff going through it. You just go, oh, wow. And I really felt that, because I, I think throughout the movie, it gets... It's very different from the first movie. Mm-hmm. And so, I mean, it's an interesting story, but then I think tying it all together with the ending really made it feel like, yes, this was a second movie. You walk away from it going, ah, it all tied together. Yeah. Shining. <laughs> oh, and the music. I love the shining, like, theme song. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's so good. Mackenzie, what was your favorite part? Well, first I feel like I should... Because I looked it up more about the blood scene because I feel pressed about it. <laughs> I should clarify that it actually was done in three takes, but it took nine days between each take. The original scene? Or... Yeah, the original okay. Kubrick, scene. Kubrick scene was, I stand corrected, it only did take three times, but it took nine days in between each take to do it. And it also took him five years to film The Shining. Wow. So, I would say my favorite part of the movie, I think similarly to Dahmer, was... I feel like I watched it, and I kind of was getting to a point where I was a little bit like, all right, we got, like, I liked that this story was different from The Shining in a way, but then there was a point where I'm like, it's supposed to be, like, The Shining related, like, it's it's Danny, and then I think the ending made it all worth, like, going back and, like, seeing it all, and just the similarities, and, like, how accurately they recreated everything, and then I feel like it just with the ending it just really kind of like summed it all it was like you got the very beginning of his childhood part as a shining and then it was like the middle which almost could have been like an independent movie and then but it tied it back in with the ending going back to the shining which was cool i would say probably and it's really little but i really like the part where he's like sitting with the guy who's about to pass that night and he starts singing with him oh and it's i think that's so very cute. sweet yeah. and it just makes me feel really good about like how danny grew up like i like that he went through some really tough times but there was some happiness like yeah. it wasn't just all like a miserable life yeah yeah i mean i so good i like love the monologues i love ewan mcgregor like everything about him so handsome so talented <laughs> The sets were gorgeous. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. His a tiny town. Clearly <laughs> an interior decorator was on deck all day. <laughs> yeah. His apartment was so cute. I it was. Know. And so was her RV. Oh, my and gosh. I would RV. live in that RV forever. Abra's house. Oh, yeah. Gorgeous. gorgeous. All of it. It was all gorgeous. Her cathedral. <laughs> cathedral. <laughs> what were our least favorite parts? Well, well, I think I know Dahmer's. Yes. Oh, here we go. Oh, to, yeah. Left the room. I. It's not because I thought it was a weak point in the movie. Just, but I mean, it was that a child, child murder. was being murdered, and the screaming and the torture went on for so long. I yeah. felt that I. It makes me like upset. <laughs> oh my gosh! Have you ever seen Sophie's Choice? No. no. Don't it, watch it. Um, really. It's a very good movie, but there is a moment when a child screams in that movie, and I was literally watching it at work. So, like, I was working, and I had to pause and, like, step away from my desk. Like, the scream of that child was, like, I was shaken for days. It was so good. That child's a great actress. <laughs> oh, oh, I thought you were shaking because you were upset, but you're like, oh, well, no, so, no, oh, no, 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 I was shaking was because I was upset, upset. Oh, and okay. that's what makes her a great actress. I see, I see. <laughs> like, she was screaming, like, as if the thing was actually happening to her. Yeah, that scene is very upsetting, but it really, like, cements these people as, like, true villains. Like, if you didn't yeah. get it before from the first child murder, in you definitely Sleep. get it in this one. I agree. I think it was hard to watch, but that's what made it good like good I guess in a way because it really does cement like and it's like sensual and so it's a super uncomfortable scene because like you just are you don't want it to be sensual because they're literally like over this dying boy that they are like murdering and they're like all up on each other and you're like ah please stop please stop these need to be separate things and like I think the discomfort you feel is like what amps it up because you're just like this poor little guy and exactly. he's so like, he's such so a good raw. actor like it's very real it's like scary to watch like 
he's too good at it, it's, it's uncomfortable, like, I will have the scene of, like, him being dead, and, like, his blood, like, blurbling, and, like, his head, like, like, rolling over, stuck in my head, like, but then them all just, like, getting all up on each other, and you're like, okay, 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 like, I gotta take a breather, like, this is stressful. It's just, that kid was so good at acting so scared. Yes. They're tying him down that it, I was, like, that's a it's, real boy. I know, and it, I think that's what makes it, like, good. It's a weird way to say it, but... Mackenzie, what was your least favorite part? I don't know. Oh, I I mean, I, I think a similar way of Dahmer, where it was, like, so upsetting that it made, like, it was uncomfortable, was the woman that he was sleeping with, like, the crackhead woman, when she was dead and, like, came back to him, and then her baby, like rolls over to yeah. and says something to him and so you know that they're both dead and in that apartment and he it just doesn't he just doesn't do anything about it which I know he like he, he can't and it's kind of an old but he can so I yeah, feel like no he could have then though like yeah. that happened because of him he basically murdered that child by leaving it there right because oh, it fills me with rage I could tell that woman was dead. Like, there was something about it that I was very much like, yeah, she's dead. And, like, yeah, she and you just... weren't lying in bed next to her, so I'm sure he could tell. Yeah. Oh. And so... When I was watching it, I was really confused. I mean, I, it was clarified while we were watching that, no, that, that dead lady is her, especially after you see the kid, but I didn't realize she was dead when he... Was when he wakes up, OD she's... Oh, she is dead. While they were sleeping. Or That's, maybe, yeah. like... Maybe she asphyxiated on her own vomit. Yeah, Who knows? I is think she dead? That's the clue she's of not that breathing. vomit. She is not breathing. You can tell. I, I watched you. Yeah, I me like, too. Because please, when, he, please. When, when that baby comes out and he goes back in the room, I watched and I was like, that woman is dead. Like, she's dead. There's no way. Like, she's done. And now the baby is dead. And then it's clarified when they come to him as ghosts or, like, whatever they come to him as. I know. Well, so, that is upsetting. <laughs> but, I mean, I think it's just, That's like... That's how he, Stephen King do, though. And, like, he cannot not write, a, like, a character that you want to all the time root for to save his life. All his but characters I mean, have to have deep flaws. He hit, That's, like, hit, that's Danny hitting rock bottom. Right. It's, like, he and, realizes, like, ugh. And that's what gets him to sober up. And I think, to me, that's why it's, like... It's, it's important, like, the boy being murdered scene. It's, like, if what would it be if it wasn't so, Yeah, and like, another thing about face. Dr. Sleep is that it's also, like, a reflection of Stephen King's own struggles with addiction. Um, because I know he, like, had, like, a lot of problems with the cocaine and stuff. I, I don't know if he was an alcoholic, but, like, it's a reflection of him, like, getting over, over that and getting sober and everything, too. Yeah. Mm. See, I totally, that totally changes how I view that first scene because I thought that he left the money so that she would be able to take care of the kid which in his mind he does at the time because I don't know if he fully realizes that yeah. she's dead but then when when she comes to him and the baby comes to him he he knows they're dead you know what I mean and at that point what Nadine is saying too is like he definitely should have called the authorities in that town and been like as an anonymous tip or whatever been like you need to go check this place out and would have found the dead bodies. At least. Because there's no resolution. We don't know if they even have found the dead bodies. Like, well, so they says, haven't. They, that's she what says they she haven't found us yet. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, even at the end of the movie, like, there's no resolution in the sense of, like, there's I mean, not one scene we get where he's calling the authorities. Maybe what was your least favorite part? Uh, probably the... His friend killing himself when the girl tells him. Oh, that oh, sucks. Man. Like, I mean, you see it, like, it's not shocking in any way, but it is yeah. like, upsetting. <laughs> I don't know. Every scene with vomit in it. So disgusting. Oh, there was And you had plenty. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so awful. And then, I mean, I think it worked out fine, but the part where um, Rose the Hat is, like, floating through the air. I just think it kind of looks kind of goofy sometimes. I, yeah, I kind of feel that. It's I mean, hard to do things like yeah, that. Yeah, it works in a book because yeah. you're just reading and you don't, like, you're not like, oh, that's silly. You're just like, oh, this is a book, whatever. And then, like, you see it on film and you're like, eh. Yeah. I mean, all of their weird head visions were a little weird. Like, when the little girl showed up and she had the Beyonce hair and no eyes. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. That's strange. Of course, but she was making her, she was trying to disguise herself and make her look like this anime character she likes. Oh, I did not character. catch on to that. Nice. They show, like, little posters and figurines I know they, of they it. showed the figurine of the anime character. Um, Mackenzie and I made a comment on that. But. Yeah. I think it's just, it's, it's hard to 
like really animate some things. Not that I don't think they didn't try super well. Like I think it was good, but it was times where you're like, yeah, you know, I don't <laughs> I mean, know. Like her flying sometimes. back to her RV and she's but, like, like doing that all part these, didn't like, bother me as much as her stuff. arriving there, just like floating. But like oh. when she's getting flung back and then she falls off the RV. I love that, that part. Cool. <laughs> the part in the grocery store was done really well too. Yes, yes the grocery yeah. store was done really well. I love that. So. Yeah. But it is just hard to decide how to do those types of things, I feel like. It's like, true. when I watched yes. Get Out for the first time, I was like, I don't know if I like the way that they're doing the sunken place. Uh, but then yeah. I kept thinking about it, and I was like, I mean, I don't know how I would do it. Like, yeah. it's a really hard thing to try to show in a visual way to explain. Yeah. Right. Get Out is such a good movie. I yeah, did is. love that movie so much. So, what did we think of the plot? Solid, right? I think so. Really I think good. it was, like, as someone going in with... I had absolutely no knowledge what Dr. Sleep was about. Like, no knowledge. Except that it had to do with The Shining. And having done the fun facts for it and being, like, waiting there for, like, all The Shining moments <laughs> that came in the last 30 minutes. Mm-hmm. I think it was a good plot line. I mean, the plot line was good, even if there were times that were... I don't know. Yeah, I think I like the part... Where they, like, kind of explain the name. Because it's, like, kind of, like, a weird name. You're like, what does Dr. Sleep have anything to do with The Shining? Mm-hmm. And then you see him in the hospice with that old man for the first time. And he keeps calling him, like, Doc is, was getting his nickname as a kid because of Bugs Bunny. But it also became his name because this old man sees him as, like, a doctor. And it's, like, helping him. And it's, like, he kind of has, like, an almost healing power in his Shining. And how he's able to help those who are dying. And then sleep because the man's dying. And he's, like, no, it's just, like, sleep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, real sweet. Yeah. Originally, I think in the book, from what I read, first part, I guess what you would classify as like the first movie, is um, around the end of that time period is when the hotel blows up. And so mm-hmm. like the whole part afterwards is like, there's no hotel. And like I said, like yeah. it's like my favorite thing that they went back to the hotel to mm-hmm. tie everything together. And so I think in that way, like... Um, I mean, it kind of worked with what they had with the last movie, <laughs> yeah. but um, I don't know. I, I think I think they did a good job with this plot. I think that it was nice too because it's a long movie. It's, it's like a two long and a half movie. hours, yeah. but it really didn't feel crazy long. No, because right. it moves along. Yeah, and like like a lot of things that you're like it's so visually pleasing too. Like I don't mind like staring at it for hours, mostly because of how well decorated everything. I know it's so beautiful <laughs> and handsome boy. I know good casting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Yeah, I feel like the timing as well, like, it was like they gave us little bits of, like, when you start to kind of get, like, in and out, it's like, okay, now we're going to kill all of those other, like, I don't know, weird, like, energy vampires, for lack of a better term. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, ooh, now we're going to, like, kill all these soul suckers off, so it's like, oh, a little bit more, but then it's like, now, like, sh- like Abra's in danger, oh, we're going to kill the crow off for you, like... It's not, like, all at once, and there's not any time where you're like, okay, <laughs> like, I'm tired of this movie. Mm-hmm. So were there any parts that really scared us? Yeah, I don't really. <laughs> you jumped scary. once, darn, but it wasn't like a scary, scary. No, part. it was a sound. I hate that. I find that to be the cheapest of jump scares on a personal level when nothing happens, but they just throw a loud sound at you to try to get you to jump, and that's what Lena jumped at. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I do think the beginning part's a little bit spooky with the the bathtub ghost. Yeah, yes. like when he's like a little boy. It's distressing to see little kids in scary situations. Mm-hmm. Right. Which is clearly why Dahmer had to leave. Like, it's distressing. So I think seeing, like, the little boy in the bathtub, you're like, no. It was interesting to me how they handled the bathtub ghost. Like, I taking think... away her nipples and just making her pubis dark. Like, I don't... It was just interesting. I was like, okay. A little weird. That's why I was like, what is this rated? And then when you guys said R, I was like, show her nipples. What are you doing? This I, is weird. So like, maybe it was like they were showing so much. I, I mean, she does system. come up a lot. Yeah. Like, she's in it. Quite a bit. Were her nipples in The Shining? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, And her pubic hair. Yeah, but Mm. she only popped up that, like, one time. Yeah, yeah. I didn't, yeah, for the most part, it wasn't a scary movie. It was mostly just interesting. But I do feel when he's walking through the hotel and the lights start coming on, mm. is it gives me, like, a, a weird feeling of, you know, because when I watch a movie, I like to put myself in those people's mm-hmm. positions, mm-hmm. which is why The Conjuring was sometimes kind of hard for me imagining being in that basement. And so the idea of things just coming on because the hotel knows you're there. Yeah. Like, well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it could definitely give you chills for sure. More chills than scares, mm-hmm, I feel like. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. yeah. So was there anything we thought was particularly hilarious? You mm-hmm. laughed really hard at a joke towards the beginning. I can't remember oh, what it was, though. Oh, yeah. But you did. I remember thinking, man, Amanda's laughing really hard at this. I was like, I mean, it's funny, but <laughs> she thinks it's very funny. I feel like, in general, there weren't... It wasn't, like, room for very many funny... Well, but there was a sweet baby kitty. Sweet baby kitty. Oh, that cat was the star. so cute. I thought that was going to be your favorite part of the movie. <laughs> oh, man, I wish that you would have given her... To, like, I wish that that would have been in the end. That would have been the best thing ever if then that cat was living with Abra. Abra. Oh! It's the hospice cat. The cat goes and I think... sleeps with her friends. And she goes, no! <laughs> Don't I trust know. that cat after that. <laughs> Tiny Town was pretty fun. Tiny Town. I want to move to Tiny Town. Yeah, so mine is the joke. It's like, like just a little joke that the dad makes when Abra comes home and she's like about to go do her homework and he's like, Harvard in four years. And oh, she's yeah, like, we'll see. And that. he's like, we will see. <laughs> and I love that. I thought oh, it was no, very that funny. Was, that was yeah. good. I liked him. Poor little guy. Okay, <laughs> I thought it was funny when Abra showed her dad that boy getting murdered and then he was trembling. Trying to oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Pours yeah. Himself yeah. Another he pours himself another drink. He pours <laughs> yeah. his drink. He asks the alcoholics if they want any, and they're like, no thanks. I He's know. like, I'm gonna take another. <laughs> I know. Ooh, man, that could be another least favorite part, is that I love you and so much, but I will say that when he was doing the scene where it was supposed to be, like, his dad being the bartender, it felt like he was trying so hard to get to those tears. Like, I felt like I could feel his struggle from here, and I was like, these tears should feel natural. Like... We thought it was wild that when she was, like, brain scanning people that the two girls had, like, superficial comments, and um, the boys had, like, r- realistic thoughts. Well, school. they, yeah, they were worried about school, and one of the other ones was being, like, superficial, and then the other one was being just mean, so it was, like, subtly sexist, Yeah, one was like, does this boy like me? Should I change my hair? Would that make him like me more? We did think it was funny also when he kept waking his friend up. <laughs> Poor little guy was just like trying to sleep. 4 a.m. I know. <laughs> Not even the first time you woke him up. <laughs> he just gets all these revelations in the middle of the night. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, when Abra like first comes into his mind with her voice and he's like, ah! <laughs> and jerked awake. He's like, I'm sleeping. I do love like immediately he was like, Look, you're like 13. You can't just come out and like the can't be seen just randomly talking together. That's kind of weird. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. We did think that was funny. I love that they brought it up too. I really loved that because I love mm-hmm. when you see something in a movie and you're like, oh come on. And I love when they address it and they're like, no, like, no, we know, we know. Yeah, 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 Even yeah, her yeah, yeah. dad was like, he's oh, not this. your friend. He's not your friend. <laughs> Uncle Dan. You Uncle oh. Dan, she's 13! <laughs> He's so calm, too. I told you to show him. I told him. Well, that's not the same! <laughs> I know what you laughed at. What? Oh my gosh, it what was, was it? It was when he meets the guy at the AA meeting, and he, like, tells him all about his watch, and then the guy's like, um, how did you know that? And he goes, it's a hunch. It was a hunch. <laughs> and lucky guess. Die. He was like, lucky guess? <laughs> <laughs> like, how can anyone guess that? <laughs> You can never get that. Like, how do you even know you can even put something on top of the soap dispenser? I know. <laughs> and he knows the specific bone disease that, that child had that he was visiting. How do you awesome. even know that I'm missing a watch? Like, get out of here. Just a lucky guess. guess. <laughs> well, no, yeah, but that's not. Like, if I went like this and then you were like, oh, you're missing your watch, I'd be like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> and then proceed to detail the entire contents of that night. <laughs> nice to meet you, by the way. <laughs> so good. I'm glad you remembered. <laughs> you look so happy. You're like, <gasps> well, I knew that it would make her mind easier. Man, you would have had to watch a long time too to get to that if yeah. you were like, no, I got it now. Because I, I would have passed if I was just scrolling through and I'd been like, nothing's funny. <laughs> so let's see. What did I think of it overall? Man, once you start rating movies, you really need to think about how you rated the other ones and how it compares. I know. So I'm like, yeah. I'm gonna give it. Four point five sweet baby kitties out of five. <gasps> I'd give it probably about four out of five sweet baby angel kitties. Yeah, I'd probably go with about four out of five sweet baby hospice kitties. I would personally only give it like three out of five, just because anything that's like super like not based in reality is always like harder for me to connect super well with. So. It's by, like, because it's a sequel to The Shining. I love that. Yeah. 
All right, and you can follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Scary Movie Clubcast and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, and we'll see you next movie night. And don't forget that there are 47 more days until Halloween. Bye. 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 No, you're whispering. You were, you I even you thought it speaking, when you were saying Yeah, I was like, it's a little <laughs> quiet. <laughs> Just do a little baby sound check. Yeah, a yeah. little well, baby <laughs> voice. <laughs> <laughs> no, you were whispering. The That's thing is, you were whispering. To an infant, not to yeah, a so. <laughs> oh, You were no. speaking normal to a sleeping oh, child. No. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> How she talks to Peppy in the middle of the night. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Too much. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, it, it is recording if you want to go. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. I just thought it'd be funny to get some outtakes there. We always have outtakes. That's not the new. <laughs> no. <laughs> we should make that a new thing that if we're trying to say three, we should say 78. Like the next time we're like, I'm 78 minutes away, guys. <laughs> Come around the corner. <laughs> so. <laughs> Mackenzie, don't interpret this wrong. Okay? This I mean, is just, just how we are as a group. I just know. trying to figure out how to put that into a sentence. <laughs> I know. My IQ level is only 78. That's why I don't know anything about The Shining. Well, Kay, I'm afraid to take a, an, an intelligence test because I'm so afraid to not come out of genius. I <laughs> and then I would come 80. up below average. I'm like, I'm stupid. You wouldn't come up below average. Yeah, there's no way you're going to be below. I know, but that doesn't stop me from being afraid of that. <laughs> it was towards the beginning. What was happening? I don't even know. It's like first, two hours ago. I know, first of all, I know, I think marked. that's why I'm like, then, I just, it was so long. What was so funny to me? <laughs> I really don't know. I'll never remember. Man, this is going to be lying in bed tonight, rewatching the first like 40 minutes. Searching for this lab. <laughs>